Welcome to another episode of In the Zone. We are honored today to have uh, one of the uh, critical players for the Boston Celtics, Marcus Morris. He's joining us in the zone. Marcus, man, thanks for thanks for joining us today. How you doing? Um, I'm good, man. Just working out, working real hard, man. Thanks for for inviting me on, man. Nah, man. Now you were one of the uh, major figures in the postseason. I got to tell you, just real right off the bat, I love the emotion that you brought to the the playoffs, particularly against Cleveland, yelling, you know, after plays and, you know, getting into Tristan Thompson's face. And where did that – I mean, you've played – you've been fiery your whole career, but uh, where did that come from and why were you so, you know, hyped and emotional in that series against Cleveland? I think, you know, the atmosphere, you know, uh, the importance of the game, I think that brought – that type of emotion out of me, you know, uh, Boston has great fans and, you know, the way they, you know, the way they showed their support to want the playoffs throughout the season. Uh, I think that that's what really brought that extra, that little bit extra, you know, screaming and that extra attitude to the game. <laughs> when you look back, I mean, maybe, I don't know if you saw it on film. Um, what'd you think when you saw it on film? Uh, which, which one? Say that again. What did you think when you saw yourself on film doing that? Uh, man, I was, it was kind of funny because, you know, outside of the game, outside of, you know, playing basketball, I'm, I'm a laid-back, quiet dude. So, you know, <laughs> doing that, it was, kind of, it was kind of funny, man. It was a little different, but, you know, the fans embraced it. You know, they loved me for it, and, you know, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, yeah. Us, now, man, take – you know. Well, I was going to bring that up. Take us back to game seven against Cleveland. Does that game still bother you? Um, you know, game seven versus Cleveland, uh, it was hype, man. You know, uh, being in that type of atmosphere, you know, being in that type of game of uh, such importance, man, it was, it was a different level that I've, you know, I've never experienced yet being in the NBA and, you know, at first it was a little, you know, nervous, but, uh, you know, my job was to to, to, to defend LeBron as, as best as I possibly could. And, you know, that's all my focus was on the entire, season, the entire series. And, you know, they got the win, but, you know, I definitely think that, you know, they knew they had to give everything they had, you know, they had to play as well as they could to beat us. I felt like I thought they would win the series. But I remember saying yeah. on the air, I thought you guys would give Golden State a better series. I thought you had matchups that, you know, fit that series better. What do you, what do you think would have happened if you guys had been able to get past Cleveland? How do you think things would have went against the Warriors? Uh, you no, know, I definitely, you know, and there's no knock to Cleveland, but I definitely think we would have put up a better fight. We definitely would have not got swept, and that's for sure. Uh you know, Cleveland, you know, the first two games, they were really critical. Uh, you know, that first game, I know that they thought they had one, which was, you know, a tough way to lose. But, you know, I just thought our matchups was a lot better, you know, as far as just more guys that you can put the ball in, in their hands and create their own shots. And, you know, Cleveland, everything went through LeBron, you know, and the yeah. other guys didn't really have as good of a series as they wanted to. I, I know definitely in, in, in the championship, they didn't play as well as they wanted to, but you know, I definitely thought we were, you know, we just, we just, we just had more matchup problems, you know, and I think that's what got us to that point in the playoffs because when we matched up against Milwaukee and the Sixers, you know, they had one or two guys that maybe that can get themselves a shot. And we had maybe five, six, you know, and that's just, you know, that's tough to match up with. There's talk, I mean, you know, Kawhi Leonard is on the trade market. Well, I wouldn't say on the trade market, but he wants to trade. And uh, Boston's been one of the places mentioned. Would you like to see you guys just come back intact, uh, obviously with a healthy Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving? Or, you know, would you, would you like to see some type of move where you can get a guy like Kawhi? Uh, you know, I thought, you know, I thought we, we played very well. Come off, and, 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 you know, if it's me, we don't need Kawhi. But, I mean, for a player of that caliber, if 
guarantees on the table that's hard to pass up. You know, with any with any yeah. team and with anything that you said, it's hard to pass up. But you know, we definitely don't need them. But you know, like I said, it's hard to pass up. And I, you know, as a GM, you know, that's just one of those things. But you know, after like the reports coming out from what people saying, he's he's going to LA either way. So you know, that's another thing you will have to think about. You know, you give up certain pieces and you only get this guy for one year. And, you know, how, yep. does that, how does that hold up with the franchise, you know? So, you know, I think it's a lot of things that go along with it. But, like I said, man, Kawhi is a great player in this league, and he's, up, he's, in my opinion, top ten in this league. So, I mean, that's just tough to pass up. How good do you think you guys will be? You know, let's say you come back as you are with a healthy Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. How good do you think, like, how far would you expect to go if y'all are healthy next year? Oh man, we healthy man. That's we talking championship. There's, there's nothing less than that. Uh, with everybody back, and you know Brad Stevens is a good coach, so he will figure out how to implement everybody and keep everybody happy. But at the end of the day, you know with that team, I think structurally, you maybe add another center if if we don't sign Aaron Baines back, and you go from there, man. And I think it's shit. You know with the way. He, and, you know, just being around my nose, it's just better. So, I mean, it, it, it's it's going to be tough to beat us. There was a lot of talk, you know, when Kyrie wasn't on the bench for game seven. You know, some people frowned on that. What was what were the players, you know, thoughts about that? You know, we never really, you know, we never really talked about it. And, you know, Kyle, I've been around him. Uh, this is my first year around him. He's a good dude. He's a great teammate. Uh, I know if he could have been there, he would have been there. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, we weren't really focused on who's sitting on the bench and who's not. You know, this is the biggest game of all of our careers. So, you know, I don't think that, you know, that that, that was a big major, you know, part in what we were doing to try to win. He was at, you know, certain practices and things like that, being around the team and, you know, helping. But, I mean, in game seven, he wasn't there. He had to have surgery. So, you know, it's nothing that we can really, you know, Say because you know I don't think that changed the outcome of the game. You know we still have to play the game with them on the bench or out, or, you know out. So I mean I, I know everybody would like to see him there, but he has other things that he had to do and he had to get surgery. So there's nothing we can really do about that. Obviously everybody's you know looking at free agency. Where will LeBron go? You know Paul George, yeah. guys like that. Are you as into it as the fans? I mean, everybody seems to be on the edge of their seats. <laughs> uh, you know, the fans, you know, they're they on the edge of their seats. It's a lot of, a lot of shit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, one thing I can say, man, is if if he does leave, and that's what I'm watching to see if he does leave, Boston will own the East. You know? And, yeah. And, and that's just what it is. You know, it's just what it is, man. And, uh, it, it, that's that's how it goes. If he doesn't, if he stays on the East, then you know we still have to you know fight against LeBron. But if he goes to the West, we own the East. We now a lot of people talking about you know Embiid and Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons in Philly. Y'all would you wouldn't be? I mean, obviously you give them their respect, but you really wouldn't be too worried about them. You feel like y'all would just have it. Y'all would have the East. Yeah, man. You know them, them guys are, are special, man. But we have, like I said, man, we have a lot of guys, man. If you look around the league, a team like ours doesn't happen to like, you know, a, a lot, you know, and that's just like with the Golden State Warriors, man. They have a, a lot of guys, and, and I think we might be more more deep than they are if we bring back the exact players that we have now because now you have, you know, you put Kyrie back out there, you put Gordon back out there. Now, I mean, Terry Rozier, he comes off as, six or seven man, I might start or come off six or seven man, and now it's like shit. You know, do yeah. we, anybody has a deeper bench of us, and you got Mark Smart coming off, like, we're eight strong, nine strong, you know, so that's tough to beat, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I just think we're just, we're just very deep. Very, very deep. Would you, would you like to see LeBron go west? <laughs> or you want him in the East so you can beat him? 
man, at this point, man, you know, if he stays in Cleveland and they get and they don't get anybody, we definitely won't lose to them again. Uh, you know, if he goes west, like I said, man, it, it'll be we get we getting there. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just don't know, man. Like a competitor, if I am, I, I would like to see him again and be able to redeem ourselves with another year under our belt. But at the same time, man. Somebody got to beat them, them guys over there in, 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 uh, in Golden State. And I wouldn't mind seeing them clash four times a year and then having to, to go against each other in, in, in the uh, Western Conference Finals. Now, there was, you know, I don't know how realistic it is, but there was some talk about maybe LeBron going to the Celtics. Um, <laughs> would you, what are your thoughts on that? Would you be in favor of something like that? See, I'm from the old school, man. I, uh, we we clashed up against him. I, I want to go against him again, man. I can't. <laughs> I, I would be joining him again, joining him to, to get better. I, I would want to go against him and beat him before that happened. You know, I'm not taking no shots to nobody, but that's just how I am. Yeah. Well. So then. So what's your thought? I mean, obviously, you got a lot of guys trying to team up and make quote unquote super teams. What's your feeling yeah. on that? You know, a lot of old school cats criticize it and say, "Man, compete." You know, what's your thought on uh, kind of these these new newfangled super teams? Um, um, I mean, that's just the way the league's going right now. You know, you, you've got Golden State, and it's just tough to beat them. So, it's either we get better teams, and where the teams are so called super teams, or we just continue to let Golden State get to where they're going every year. That's just it. There's no way around it. You know, they're they're really good. I mean, what, what can you do about it but get somebody, get a team that's just as good and go against them, you know, or just as, or just as better? You know, they won three out of the last four years. And in any league, that's so tough to do. So, I mean, like, I feel like at this point, there's no other choice but to get other teams to get to beat those guys. When you look at Horford, Al Horford, Gordon Hayward, Kyrie Irving, three All Stars, you know you and Rozier, that's great depth. You know Tatum, Jason Tatum looks like he's got a great future. Jalen Brown. I mean, do you kind of feel like you guys are a super team? You know, with the emergence of the younger guys, I definitely do, man. They, you know. The way they open up the league eyes, and you know, you know, playing as well as they did when Kai and a couple of other guys down, I think we're right on the edge of having that super team. You know, uh, with another year and the work ethic that those guys have, and you know, and the coach that we had, we're just about right there. You know, uh, just implementing um, a we're back in it will be, you know, that would be exciting to see how that goes and. You know, that we're really waiting on that, really. And uh, if he comes back and, he, you know, he plays his, his, his normal self, man, I, I feel like it's hard to beat us. It would be really tough to beat us. You've guarded and played against, you know, the best wing players in the league. How good can Jason Tatum be? I mean, I think most people think he can be a star, but what do you think is, you know, the heights that he'll reach? You know, like what – maybe – if there's a player, like, can he get to a KD level? Can he get to a, you know, Kawhi level? Or, what, you know, how good can he be? Oh, uh, man, sky's the limit for that kid. You know, I think uh, I think he's going to be really, 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 really good. You know, the only thing I think is that, you know, KD had the ball in his hand a lot coming in the league, you know, so he, he played through the mistakes and he didn't have a Kyrie, he didn't have a, uh, those guys that, you know, take the ball out of his hand sometime. And, you know, I think that could be the difference of how fast the development, the, the fast development is, you know, uh, he got to play with everybody else. And I think that, you know, the way KD developed was from day one, it was KD and everybody else got in line, you know what I mean? And that's the only thing. It's just, it, I think his development might be just a tad bit slower, but I think he wins more early on, you know, mm. things like that. So you, you've you played, like I said, you've guarded KD, Kawhi, LeBron, Anthony Davis, all these great wing players. 
people refer to LeBron as the best player in the world. From your experiences of guarding all these guys, do you is that how you feel? Um, definitely, man. You know, and that's no not KD is a great player. You know what I'm saying? But also, shit, man. Man, when you got Clay and Steph, <laughs> his percentages are going to go sky high because now you have to guard those guys. The lane becomes very wide open. You know what I mean? And doing what LeBron did this year was was definitely was definitely special, man. Because hey, you know we gonna call it spade a spade. The guys around him didn't play well. He yeah. literally carried those dudes. You know what I mean? And, and that was the difference. He carried those dudes. You know, KD is a scorer. He can get it done. His defense has got a lot better, uh, you know, over the years. And he definitely can get it done. But LeBron is dishing. He's rebounding. He's scoring. You know, it's, it's that's just, you know, he's doing the entire the entire thing. And that's, that's, that's tough to, you know, to go against. So I'm going to ask you for your honest opinion. If you were in LeBron's shoes, where would you go? This summer, <laughs> if I was in LeBron's shoes, <laughs> I would stay home, man. Really? If it was, I, I would stay home, and I'm not saying that because you know that's what I want him to do. But you know that's just me. I would stay home, man. I, I would try to get some guys over there, you know, and you know who doesn't want to play with him. So at the same time, I would get some guys to come over there, and then we go right back at it another year. And, you know, I, I, I would definitely stay home, but you know, it's it's, it's it's intriguing, man, that what you can do in L.A. And, and what you can put together out there and being in L.A. and playing for Magic and things like that, that's definitely intriguing. So that's hard to pass up, you know. So uh, at the end of the day, man, you know, uh, it's a tough decision, man, depending on how bad he wants to win and, 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 and things like that. But for me, that's just like if I was in Philly, I, I, would, I would stay home and, and, and grind it out. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now, of course, you got a twin brother, Markeith, who plays in the league as well. Ironically, y'all have this same scoring average for your careers, 11 points a game. <laughs> He's a few decimal points ahead of you, but it's basically 11 points for each of you. You know, I got twin girls. They're identical twins like you guys. And I have not seen – I mean, they're close. They're really close. But, you know, I haven't seen, you know, how they talk about twins having this extra connection and all that, you know. I haven't yeah, really yeah. seen that with them. But have you, you and Markeith, do you guys have that, have a kind of extraordinary connection, you feel like? Uh, yeah, for sure, man. Because, you know, I think it starts at a younger age. When we were younger, we did everything together. It was, it, you know what I mean, my, my mom. Uh, growing up, she made sure that we were like really close, and then that led into the sports. So when we played sports, it was always receiver, quarterback, uh, 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 small four, power four. So everything was done together. So our minds kind of were connected. It's kind of funny saying it, but we're like connected. Like even when we play now, it's like if we were on the same team, I can make a pass and I know for sure that he will get it and we will be upset at each other if he didn't, you know what I mean, or <laughs> I didn't. You know, and that's just something with twins, you know, it's hard to explain, man, but like even today, like even days, I will call him and he'll be like, man, I was just about to call you a second before you called me or, or something like that. <laughs> or I was just about to say that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's fun, man, you know, but, you know, the thing about it is, man, and the ultimate goal was to get to the NBA together. You know what I mean? Rather, we're playing on different teams. It would get there together, and that you know that was the main goal. And from a younger, from a young age, we pushed each other to not only, not only one of us get there and be and be content. It was making sure that we both got there and that we both were solid in the league. How competitive are you guys? Because my twin girls are very competitive with each other. You know, for us, it's more like we're competitive at like, like video games and and, and and things like that. But other than that, you know, we're not really competitive, man. We just, you know, we want each other to to be the best we can be. You know what I mean? Together. So, like, even during throughout the season, like we're we're constant. Like, I watch every game that he play almost. If I'm not playing, I watch them all. 
I send them little tips, even if it's the first or the second, you know, game of the season. We want what's best for each other, and we continue to push each other to get better, you know. So uh, we're not really competitive, man. And that's that's the funny part about it because I talk to a lot of other twins, and they damn near want to kill each other when they play playing against each other. <laughs> I was like, nah, we've never been like that. Never been that <laughs> well, did, now, did y'all used to play one-on-one growing up? Yeah, we, I mean, a little bit, but we had an older brother. And I, I have a few older brothers. We used to just play two-on-one against him. Oh, okay. We, had, we were able to dunk, and then it, once we became able to dunk, it was like, all right, we play two on two against anybody, but it's not too much one on one. We might play one on one now, but it's, it's just it's through the motions of just figuring out little things, trying to tweak little things about each other's game. Yeah, you ain't really going at it like to to beat each other so so much. Yeah, yeah, man. I know it sounds a little crazy, but that's just how we are, man. And you know, we've been like that and. You know, I think that's what got us to the point we're at today. You know what I mean? Having somebody like that that's actually in the same position you are in to push you as hard as they can and, you know what I mean, to help you as much as they can. And and I think that, you know, if everybody had that, the world would be so, a better place, man. And that's and that's just real. No, nah, that's that's true. That's true. Now, let me ask you this. There, there was you. – I'm sure you're aware of this. Back in the 2017 playoffs, there was this conspiracy theory going around that you had actually played for Markeith. <laughs> he was out with the yeah. Wizards with an ankle injury. Now, we know it wasn't yeah. true, but do you think y'all ever could pull anything like that off? Uh, no, nah, just in the simple fact that, like, Keith is a traditional four, man. You know, and I've played the three for the past three, four years in the NBA. So I think if it will be – you can just see it if I just start dribbling the ball or bringing it up because Keith don't do that. You know what I mean? If I get on the wing <laughs> and I'm coming off a pick and roll, just not realizing where I'm at, it might get a little fishy, you know what I'm saying? And he, and he jumps <laughs> higher than me. It's, it's little things that you would be able to see him like, damn, I've never seen that before. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, might, right. it might turn it over. But, you know, and the fact that, you know, that he – twisted his ankle you know I was kind of upset a little bit that people thought I would really you know I mean that it wasn't him because you know it's tough that the way he twisted his ankle and come back and, and put himself on the line for a team like that man like he should get all the credit you know it shouldn't be oh is that the other twin playing I thought it was funny but at the end of the day you know he came out there with a severely bad sprained ankle and still went out there and contributed to his team so you know that's the only thing that you know I didn't like Yep, yep, I feel you. Last question. Growing up, did you guys ever pull tricks like that? I mean, like date a girl, the different guy, you know what I mean, or in class or with teachers or anything like that? Oh, come on, man. I can't tell you everything. <laughs> we, 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 we might be the best twins in the world, man. Like, we, we, didn't, we, didn't, <laughs> man, we, didn't, we didn't switch classes. We didn't took trips for each other. We didn't did a lot of stuff that, you know, we got to go to the grave with. <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, man, I appreciate the time, Marcus. Um, you had a great year, specifically in the playoffs. And, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all do next year, uh, whether LeBron's in the East or not. No doubt, man. I thank you for having me. You got to come back and, and holler at me after all this going on. I'll I, I tell you how it's going to go because I don't know what's going to happen, man. Everything's up in the air. You know, uh, You know. hopefully I stay in Boston. You know, I love it there. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business. You know, they're looking to get new guys and shuffle the deck. So, you know, I don't really know where I'm going to be. But, you know, I Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you worried? You know, you see stuff out there. Are you worried about that? No, nah, I'm not, you know, for me, I'm not worried, man. You know, a piece like me, I think anybody in the league can use, you know what I mean? A guy that can start, a guy that can come off the bench and, and give you buckets and defend the toughest guy and be a tough part of your team and bring the energy and bring that toughness that every team has to have to win a championship. I don't care how it goes, you've got to have some tough SOBs on your team to win, man, and that's just what it is, yeah. so... At the end of the day, you know, I, I think my value in the league is very high because it's so much stuff I bring. So, you know, whoever gets me, you know, and like I said, I love Boston and I, and I want to stay there. But whoever gets me, they're going to get they're going to get a great piece, man, a great veteran, you know, and a great leader and a great player. 
No doubt, no doubt. Let me ask you one more thing, because your coach, you've mentioned Brad Stevens a few times, and obviously he's yeah. a tremendous coach. Can you give me one story about why he's such a good coach? You know, you, it, it, it's more. Uh, it's not just a story. It's just the the way he says things before it happens. I could tell you about that 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 Sixers that Sixers uh. Uh, uh, in the regulation, it might have been overtime in the playoffs when I made the pass to Al Horford. Yeah, the way he the way he drew up the play, and the first time I think when he drew the play up, it was just a decoy, just to see how they were going to guard. You know, he knew that play wasn't going to work. He knew it wasn't going to work the first time. You know, and then the second time, he wrote it out exactly how it was going to play, and he told me exactly what was going to happen, and exactly. <laughs> those things happen, you know what I mean? And that, and that was multiple times throughout the year that that happened. And I've never played for a coach that can kind of see everything before it happens. You know what I mean? That's normal what players do. You know wow. what I mean? From what I've, what I've noticed, he does that so well. And he, he, he comes up with schemes so well. And he just, his attention to detail is like, it's like slim to none, man. You know, even when we practice, we don't really even practice. We go over those small details, and we go over, go over, go over, and go over them. And then in the game, that's all you need to win. So does that give you like, – like when you go into a series, were you guys going in like, man, we know we got a big advantage on the bench coaching-wise? Like does that give you extra confidence? Oh, for sure. For sure, man. That's going into almost all the series, you know, and all the coaches in the NBA are very good coaches. But Brad Stevens, you know, he's like a professor that knows everything. You know what I mean? He brings that to basketball. He knows the game so well that he just – he sees it before it happens. You know what I mean? He sees it and he knows what we need to get better at going into certain games, and that's what we work on. You know, we don't – waste no energy we don't waste no time in the gym of going over you know stuff that doesn't really matter mm, mm, good stuff good stuff well marcus i know you about to go work out and i'll be in touch man i'll hit you after some of these free agent moves are made no doubt man i love to get back on here chris all right bro thanks man all right appreciate it